You guys have heard of the term alternative routines, right? The first few things people usually think about when someone mentions alternative proteins are brands such as Impossible Meat, Beyond Meat and even Cell Cultured Meat. You may think that these are all very new and exciting, but did you know that alternative proteins have existed way longer before any of these brands even appeared? And we're going to cook some today! So here are some of the alternative proteins out there. First and foremost, Impossible Meat. And then we have some soy protein alternatives. Soy protein, soy protein. And we also have micro protein. And then we have mock meat and even alternative proteins such as tofu and tempeh. Wait, tofu and tempeh are alternative proteins? Yeah! So that leads to our first myth, the common misconception that alternative proteins are new and novel because the truth is, people have been eating it for centuries. Ooh, I'm gonna eat it as it is right now. This is like, you know, a TikTok trend, you know. And last but not least, a sprinkle of freshly cut onion. Woo! Yeah. Simple, easy. Um, tofu root. Seeing the tofu and tempeh actually reminds me a lot of my university friend. He's a vegan bodybuilder, so you know, he can only eat like these kind of proteins, which he eats a lot. YK, I hope you are doing well. Alternative proteins, just like the name suggests, simply refers to proteins derived from other sources other than animal protein. Proteins are essential nutrients that all living things need. They are known as the building blocks of life because every cell in your body contains proteins, including your DNA. We need it for growth and development, to repair damaged and worn-out cells, and to maintain proper functioning of our organs. So it is so much more than just something that gym rats gobble down to grow their muscles. Of course, meat from animals do have a lot of these proteins as well because that is essentially what meat is made up of. But for foods such as tofu and tempeh, they are categorised as plant-based proteins since they are made from soybeans and thus they can also be called alternative proteins. Think of alternative proteins as the mother category that includes not only plant-based proteins but also algae-slash-fungi-based proteins, cultured meats and insect proteins. The newer kid on the block, what you guys are initially thinking of, is commonly referred to as novel food. Which leads us to our second myth that novel foods are all mumbo-jumbo, lab-grown, chemical-filled products. Generally, novel food just refers to food and food ingredients that do not have a history of being consumed by humans. Novel food can include some of the alternative proteins mentioned previously, but also more obvious ones such as cultured meat. It is important to note that not all alternative proteins are novel food. Because these are not the traditional food or dishes that we know of, some of these alternative proteins that we intend to use in our cooking may need to be cooked differently, which I will share more with you guys later on. The third myth that we will be discussing is the misconception that novel foods are not safe to eat because, well, they are novel and new. Uh, oh no, 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 okay, okay. So I've actually heard a number of people saying that they feel that alternative proteins such as cultured meat are not safe to eat because they do not know of their long-term effects. I can see how this can be a concern, but here's the thing. Any companies that produce novel food products are required to conduct and submit safety assessments of their products for the Singapore Food Agency's review before they are allowed for sale. What this means is that from the start to the very end of the entire process, SFA has strict rules and regulations at every step to ensure the safety of the consumers. Let's take cultured meat for example. The process to produce cultured meat involves growing animal cells such as chicken or shrimp in a bioreactor with cultured media using the technology of tissue engineering. Every individual step of growing this meat, including any chemicals added, processes used, as well as potential site reactions, are assessed by a panel of experts specialising in many different areas. And only when every single step in the production process is deemed safe, will this product then be allowed for sale and eventually make it onto the frying pan. We're going to start off by cooking the impossible meat. I think you can eat this raw actually because it's like plant protein, so it's like tatar, I think. Sure not. Hey, not bad, it's quite savoury. Eh? Oh! Okay, so I'm gonna cook this medium rare or like medium rare to medium well because for impossible meat, right? If you cook it well done, right, you will dry the whole meat out. So you have to cook it like slightly raw in the middle so you keep the juices in. Yeah. They actually like, make like this, 
Yeah, but the thing is, beef, right, they have animal fats inside, while for Impossible Meat, they're actually using like coconut oil, so it's like plant-based fat. And hence, the coconut oil oil actually liquefy much easily and at a lower temperature. So if you cook it for too long, that's where the juices will all leak out, the oil will all leak out, and then you will get a very dry patty. That's why you cannot cook it for too long. Yep, yep. Patty like a patty. Oh, keep it thick. And then we shall sear it outside. Is that a bit too thick at the No, it's okay. It's okay. This is the way to go. Oh, it browns so quickly. Okay, this is very different from the usual. No lower fire. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Uh, 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 salt, salt, pepper, 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 onion, cajun. I think I want chili flakes. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, can. Then we, then we flip it. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Uh. Oh, look at it. Wow, look at my patty. One of it, huh? You need to flatten it. Oh, oh, yeah. I think I'm too late already. I cannot flatten it. It's a bit weird shape. I think we will leave it at that. Pip, yeah. This is medium rare, I think. Can you see? It may look reddish, right? But those are actually like him molecule. Feels like a meat. Ow, 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 ow. Hot. Excited! As with all foods, especially new ones, there may be unknown risks that have yet to be discovered. Good thing is, SFA will continue to keep abreast of the latest scientific developments surrounding alternative proteins and will implement the appropriate measures when necessary to safeguard the health of us consumers. I'll try now, ah. I'll try now, ah. Ooh, 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 it's quite juicy, eh. Ooh. Mmm. It's actually very savoury. It tastes like meat. It doesn't taste like beef, but actually it tastes like another unique texture. It's like there's a bit of toing, 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 toing. So we have also cooked the other types of alternative proteins. And we shall start out with the vegetarian mock meat. So this is actually vegetarian mutton balls. And it is made with soy protein and also mushrooms. Wow. Oh. I mean, you guys have eaten like vegetarian meals before, right? It tastes pretty much like it. We're gonna try these two. So they're actually made from soy. But one is nugget form and one is like chicken bites. So I'm very excited. Oh, it looks just like any chicken nugget. Oh, it tastes... Oh, it tastes like chicken nugget also. Oh, this is a game changer. I guarantee, right, if you let your friends try these nuggets, they wouldn't guess that it is made from alternative proteins. Next up, we're gonna try chicken bites. Mmm, I think texture-wise is a bit lacking. But uh, taste wise oh, it's pretty good. These are just mini chicken nuggets, like, in other words. For me. Last but not least, let's try these micro-protein nuggets. So micro-protein is actually me. Single-celled fungi. They are not mushroom, they are just like some other fungi. Wait, so. What's the difference between mushroom and fungi? So mushroom is type of fungi, but there are a lot of other fungi around in the world. They are not mushrooms. Should we go lah? Oh, this and like the one made from soy. I think soy there's a bit of chewiness to it. Actually, I don't taste any difference eh. Do you think it's plant-based? No, I wouldn't also. Out of all the alternative proteins that I've tasted, uh, personally, I still prefer the Impossible Meat Patty because you know how it looks and actually tastes pretty similar to you know the real beef patty. But you know all of them are good in their own way, and I enjoy it. <laughs> to identify an alternative protein, you just have to look at the packaging because companies selling pre-packaged alternative protein products in Singapore must label the product with qualifying terms such as mock cultured or plant-based to indicate their true nature so that consumers know exactly what they are buying. In fact, your fake crab meat or crab steak, right? The one made out of sumi fish paste? They are usually labelled as imitation crab steak and not just crab meat alone. At the end of the day, whether to eat alternative proteins or not is entirely up to you. But what I am sharing is that alternative proteins that are sold in Singapore are safe to eat and hopefully it can complement our diet on top of our traditional protein sources. Not only do alternative proteins have the potential to feed a growing population, each of them has its own unique taste and texture that can be made into special dishes of its own. 
Having more options is always good and being able to consume less meat while we are at it is something we can work towards. That's all for today. Just keep thinking.